This is the 35th anniversary of Radio Times. I began at WHYY even before then. I was working as a school counselor in Philadelphia. I worked as a case manager at a mental health center. And I began here as an intern working in the news department. Eventually, I worked my way into creating with Bill Seamring, who was the station manager at the time, a show called Radio Times. I went on the air as the host, executive producer, absolutely terrified. I had never done this before in my entire life, but I did find that I loved being on the air. I loved being in front of a microphone. I loved interviewing people and I loved mixing it up with our listeners. The essential part of Radio Times is the same, which is honest conversations, I believe, about important issues with interesting people engaging our very diverse and fascinating audience across the region. Radio Times does not go on the air without talented, hardworking, ambitious producers, and I've had many, many of them over the years to make sure we get the right guests, give me the right research material that I use to put the shows together. And of course, the engineers who are working behind the scenes and troubleshooting. It's very much a team effort, and I get to have that microphone, but there have been and there are a lot of people behind me that make this a real thing that happens every day. Marty is amazing to work with. She's always incredibly well prepared. She has this amazing rapport and is so warm with guests that they feel really comfortable and open up to her. She has a great interviewing style. People often ask me, what is she like, you know, when she's not on the radio? And she's exactly the same. She's amazing. I have never seen anyone be able to talk about so many different topics. And this is Marty working one day ahead every single day. The motto of the show is that we don't break the news, we put it back together. And so we stay on top of that breaking news and then Marty just takes this deep dive and then we end up with this magical one hour show. For about 25 years, I did two hours a day. So there have been thousands and thousands of people that I've talked to over the years. One of my favorite early interviews was with Wilt Chamberlain who grew up in Philadelphia. I came in after he had already sat down and he stood up to say hello, and he just kept on going up and up and up. And he was wonderful, charming, had great stories to tell. And of course, a couple of years ago, we did a live event with Stacey Abrams. She was so charismatic and so interesting and so warm and real. And sometimes the guest that turns out to be as fascinating is the one you never heard of before. We've had some great guests over the years. There have been times when I'll be in line at a supermarket or something like that and talking to my husband and someone will say, oh, are you Marty Moss Cohen? Because they recognize my voice. So that's kind of a thrill. And we have listeners from 35 years ago who stayed with the show through thick and thin. And that really just feels very good. We're always looking for new listeners and ways of creating conversations that can bring a large, diverse audience together. So in my mind, all these people that don't really know each other, if I can get them connected over a conversation about COVID or Ukraine or how to be a good friend to your best friends, things like that, then I feel like I've done my job. Hi, I'm Shirley Men. And I'm Regina Mitchell. For more videos like this, subscribe to WHYY.